If you use Ableton Live's arrangement view for running tracks live on stage, then it's very likely that you've run into this issue. You go to build your set, you get to song two, you go to drag song two from Live's browser into your set. Here's my locator over here for song two. I move it over here, ready to drop it. And you'll notice my song drops right below song one. Now, this is an issue that I hear from particularly new students that are switching from session view to arrangement view, or people that are new to use an arrangement view for building sets. They reach out and say, why in the world will song two not drop into place? It always drops on your song one. I can never get it in place in their song two. Well, it's completely okay. And in today's video, I wanna show you why that's not that big of a deal and a quick workaround that I have for it that's gonna to continue to allow you to build your sets very, very quickly. So let's dive in and let's get started. Now, first thing I should mention, in order to make this process super smooth, you need to follow what I call the three-part framework for using tracks. I've linked to videos in the description of this video that walk you through that whole process. Step one is have a template for live performance. Step two is use that template to format all your songs exactly the same way. And then step three, open that same template, take those formatted songs that were formatted using that template to build your set. Okay, so number one, have a template. Number two, format all your songs the same. Number three, build a set. So what I would encourage you to do before you even get into this process of building a set is you need some sort of template. So you can head to from studio to stage.com slash template, get the free template that I offer there. That's what I use to format these songs that I'm gonna be dragging song to into place. So if you haven't yet, head to from studio stage.com slash template, and then use your template to format all your songs exactly the same way. Again, I've linked to videos in the description of this video that show you exactly how to do it. Now, let's talk about that pesky song, song two that will not drop into place, okay? So I'm gonna undo this. You'll see I have a locator here for song two, um, and I'm actually gonna put this on beat, okay? So this is kind of the typical process I use when I'm building a set. The next thing I would do is right click here. I would insert a time signature change, four, four, that's my song, okay? So at this point, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to drag song two in. And typically what happens here is we go and select song two from the, the browser. We try to drag it into the place. And again, like I showed you in the beginning, you see that it goes right below our first song. This is a real drag, pun intended, right? Uh, it stinks that it doesn't go into place, but that's okay. Now that's just the reason it's happening. That's just the way Ableton was made. Um, if you were dragging individual stems, so I'll actually go in and show you this. If I went into just my stems folder here, uh, I went into imported and here's my stems for my song. If I went and did this, I could drag those stems into place. And you're probably going, well, Will, why don't you just do that? Like, what's the whole point of this video if you could do that? Well, the reason I don't do this is I practice a, a key principle that I taught uh, in one of the videos you'll see below. And I think I mentioned it in all the other videos, which is manage sets, not stems. You should manage sets, not stems. What we're looking at here are stems. Again, I could drag them right into place and you're going, okay, we'll get to the point. Why, why should I not do this? Well, the reason I don't manage stems and instead I manage sets is when I bring my stems in, I don't have a tempo. My tempo doesn't come with my stems. And then two, my locators don't come with my stems. Now you may be ahead of me already and go, well, Will, when you manage sets and you bring a set in, uh, your locators don't come with it either. But when I'm building out a set, and I'm taking my stems and putting them into a live set. I have my tempo track, which saves my tempo. Uh, and I have my markers track, which saves all my song sections. So you can see that here. Okay. So that's why I think instead of using stems, you should manage and create a live set. But again, back to our main problem here. When we go to drag this song in, there's no way for me to click and drag and place it right on song two. But that's perfectly okay. Uh, one thing that's really going to help this, and then I'll show you the process if you've done this correctly using a template, formatting your songs, why this is not a big deal. This will be a short video. We'll be done in like two minutes, so bear with me. First thing, um, I'm going to pre-map all my locators so that they're assigned to my keyboard. So you can see I've only got song one, song two here. Uh, song two is already named for my second song. Uh, and I did that at my template level. So that free template from studiosage.com slash template where you can get that. That's already got those keyboard shortcuts added to that. So uh, that when I'm building my set, and you'll see in a second while that's important, uh, I can just press two and I'm going to jump right to this locator here. Okay, so here's what the process looks like. Um, one, I took my template, my free template, and I formatted all my songs using that template. That means the track flow, the track structure of all these songs is exactly the same way. Now, uh, neither of these songs has an original track, but one of my later songs has it. So I do have the original track track. If you're confused about what this is, as I've mentioned many times before, watch the videos that are linked in the description of this video. So let's get to it. I'm gonna drag song two in. 
I'm going to go right to my live set here. So the live set is the file that ends with .als. Again, you'll see this drop right below song one. That's perfectly fine because here's what we're going to do. Leave it for now and we're going to move it into place. And you'll see why having that template with that locator pre-assigned helps. So I'm going to go to the end of my track here. Okay, so this is song two. Even though it's right below song one, uh, this is still song two. I'm going to go to the end of it. I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to go all the way to the beginning of song two. Okay, super easy keyboard shortcut. You know this one if you've ever used Microsoft Word or any uh, word processing software. Command X if we're on a Mac. Control X if we're on a PC. We're just cutting, okay? Cut and paste. We, we all know that. Next, I'm going to press 2. And the reason I can press 2, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, is I have that template, and in my template, I pre-assigned um, uh, locator 2 to the number 2 on my keyboard, okay? So uh, I've cut it. Now let's press 2. So we jump to that locator, and you probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Command V. Okay, which is going to paste it. So what I did is I took it from where it was to this part in the set. Now this next part is uh, super important. Most people just move really quickly and move past it, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave all of this highlighted. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see everything that's happening. Um, and while it's still highlighted, I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna click just above my stems and over to the right. So pass my song, hold shift. Right. And so what I'm essentially doing is is keeping the, the top part of the song, the, the track formatting, my click tempo guide markers, original track. I want to keep those highlighted, but I want to lose all my stems below. OK, so now I'm going to do this again. Command X to cut or control X if you're on a PC. I'm going to click anywhere in my top track. So my click track here and watch what I'm going to do again. I'm going to press two to jump me back to song two and then paste. OK, the reason that that worked and the reason it works so smoothly is because I used my template from studiostage.com slash template, I think you know where it is now, uh, to format all of my songs. So song two, my dream song, has the same exact formatting as song one, so that when I paste those clips, they all paste in the right spot. Now, for some reason, when you go to do that, if it doesn't paste for you, typically two things happen, or, or one of three things. One, you didn't care about track formatting, so you have completely different formatting. Uh, two, you have different file types, right? So maybe your tempo track is audio, but for song two, um, it was MIDI or something like that. Then it's not going to pace because the MIDI clip is going to struggle to go into the audio track. It's just going to be a mess. So that's typically what I see happen. The third possible scenario is you actually didn't click in the right place. So maybe you thought you clicked on the click track, but you clicked here and it threw off the pacing of all your content. Okay. So make sure you use your, your template to format everything the same. Make sure you're actually clicking in the correct track and, and paste it. And then three, if it still doesn't paste, again, double check that you formatted everything exactly the same way. If it's audio track, it's audio track. If it's a MIDI track, it's a MIDI track. Okay, final step here that I do, I go and take the click all the way to original track or whatever the, the top bit that came in with your song. It may be different for you based on your template. Whatever the top bit is, I'm going to click the first track, hold shift to select the last track, and I'm going to hit delete. Okay, so now what I have, if I press one, I have song one. If I press two, I have song two. I could go throughout song two if I wanted and add more locators uh, to, to, to match my song sections there. If I have uh, time signature changes, I might want to go through and do that. Uh, there's a lot of other things I could do, but the nice thing is this is how we solve that issue of song two not place, uh, pasting in the right place. It's not a big deal, uh, and it's a pretty quick fix as long as, number one, you're using a template, use that template to format your songs, and number three, use that same template uh, to create your set. Okay, if you have any questions that you want answered uh, in a future video like this, do me a favor, send me an email to questions at from studio to stage.com. That's questions at from studio to stage.com. I, I can't promise that I'll make a tutorial out of it, but if it's a um, something that's quick enough for me to answer, I'll just reply and, and try to you know give give my best possible answer. If I've already answered it, I'll do my best to link to a tutorial that I've already created. Or there's a chance I, it may be something that makes sense to add into a future tutorial. Um, all of these suggestions, all these ideas are coming from you guys. So the more you stay in touch, the more you email questions at from Studio Sage, the more this content will exist. And then finally, if you have a question that you have just struggled to find the answer to uh, for months, for weeks, maybe even for years, 
or you want some just a little bit extra help, a little bit extra hand holding to figure out something with Ableton Live, something with uh, gear surrounding Ableton Live, eye connectivity devices, whatever it is, um, then I actually offer one on one training that uh, we can connect over Zoom for an hour. I'll record the entire session for you and you'll get a link to that that you can have for life that you can access and reference. Or even if it's just a really quick question, 15 minute question, you can book a 15 minute session with me. It's enough time to really answer one question. But again, if you just need some extra help, you want to be sure that you're doing it the right way or have a problem you just can't solve, uh, then check the links in the description of this video to book a one-on-one -on -one session. I would love to chat, would love to get you to get to know you better, and would love to help solve whatever problems you've got going on. Thanks so much for watching this one, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week, next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Central, same exact place you're watching this. Uh, we'll see you there. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.